Hey, it's me, and this is a pilot episode for a new series where I take an intersection I don't like and rip it a new butthole. Be sure to stay until the end and comment your response to my response to this intersection, because at the end of episode two, I'm going to take all of your perfectly reasonable and well thought out YouTube comments, because that's how it works, and use it to do an updated analysis of today's intersection. The process will then repeat ad infinitum because it is literally impossible to run out of fodder for this series. It's gonna be great. I'll learn things from your comments, you'll learn from what I and the other commenters have to say. Then we can work together to change our streets so we're not like, you know, dying in them all the time. Today's intersection is 16th Avenue and Troy Street. Sort of. On City of Aurora maps, it's listed as Troy Street, I guess because it's sort of, but not really in line with the rest of Troy Street. But it's not signed as anything, and Google Maps doesn't recognize it as Troy Street. But I have to call it something now, don't I? So I'm going to call it Troy Street. Also, both streets are part of a private street easement, which, pay attention, will be important later. This intersection has compounding layers of unfortunateness. It has a four-lane, four-way stop. It has some design-slash-engineering issues that I find troubling. And it has two WTF layers that are just... The most important layer, of course, is the high pedestrian traffic. 16th and Troy is located between a large regional hospital and that hospital's parking garage. So... Who is it that goes to a hospital again? Old people. Families. People using crutches or a wheelchair. More old people. A parent carrying their newborn child. Maybe for the first time, you don't know. These are the people who were forced to navigate this abomination of an intersection. I'd like to get this out of the way. There is no reason for 16th Avenue to be four lanes. Colfax has more than enough through lanes to go around. Thank you very much. Two lane four way stops are great. I mean, at least as car infrastructure goes. When you add just a couple more lanes, it all goes out the window. Before I get to the engineering, there's something I need to acknowledge about this intersection. And that is, if everybody would just follow the rules, and that's the problem. If your solution starts with, well, if everyone would just, then you don't have a solution. You are willfully pretending that the incredibly complex realities of human behavior do not exist. And your solution only works in the imaginary reality that you created in your head where everyone's a robot for some reason and follows the arbitrary rules you laid out that you probably don't even follow yourself because we're all big dumb hypocrites with logs in our eyes. This is a whole thing that I will be talking about later, but this episode is long enough as it is, so let's just see how this plays out at 16th and Troy. The main culprit here is the diagonal pedestrian ramps that I can only assume were built because it's cheaper to build four ramps instead of eight, and cutting costs on pedestrian safety is fine, because of course it is. According to my lazy Google research, these are ADA compliant as long as there's 48 inches from the apex of the curve to the inside of the corner where the crosswalks meet. However, there are a ton of blog posts describing in rich detail how these diagonal curb ramps are dangerous for the people the ADA is supposedly protecting. Just because it's legal, doesn't mean it's not unfortunate. Those 48 inches lead directly to the other two engineering unfortunalities. The crosswalks pushed up against traffic and the gigantic curb radii. The corner radii are humongous and start even before the stop sign, which is dumb, so the people driving it feels like a free ride. It's not though, so what happens is drivers go to blow through like it's a free ride, and then, oh shit, a pedestrian in the right of way at a stop sign. There's literally no way I could have foreseen this. I'll stop and wave them through though with a smug look on my face, like I'm being super generous, even though they have the right of way in the first place, and I'm blocking the very same crosswalk that I'm waving them into, so now they have to walk into oncoming traffic and go around me. This exact sequence of events happens all day, every day at this intersection. It would be comical if it wasn't so stupid. So far, this is just an extreme version of your standard unfortunate intersection. It's time to get weird. Story time. A long time ago, a mysterious someone in some position of power or another became aware that this intersection was problematic. And so they did something about it. And by did something about it, I of course mean did something about it. First, someone slapped yield to pedestrian signs on the posts below the stop signs and, let's be honest here, these don't do shit because you can't fix bad designs with signs. Whatever, that's not what bothers me. What does bother me is that someone removed the crosswalk. And by remove the crosswalk, I of course mean remove the crosswalk. They managed to do less than a half-assed job. You can see the grind marks here, yet somehow more than half of the paint remains. And that's not even the weirdest part.
So because the crosswalk removal didn't actually stop people from crossing the street at the crosswalk, this mystery person decided that the solution to their half-assed fix was another half-assed fix. Someone, possibly that same someone, installed this abomination. Again, I'm not a lawyer, but there's no way this is ADA compliant, right? I mean, my eyes work just fine and I almost ran into it on multiple occasions. And I'm the one that thinks about it so much that I made a video about it. And it's being actively maintained. What? During the time that I've been observing this intersection, the caution tape has faded, broken, been tied back together in multiple places with a granny knot, and then replaced with brand new caution tape. Our mystery thickens. Who do you think's maintaining it? Of all the people I suspected, I never would have guessed the parking contractor. Now, because it's a private street, I don't know who's actually behind either the half-assed crosswalk removal or the caution tape nonsense. I really hope it's not the city because they should know better, right? Right? So did the hospital really contract out the sidewalk scraping or did someone in the maintenance department take some misguided initiative? How high up the corporate ladder was the call made to remove the sidewalk in the first place? Who approved funds for it? And who signed off on the incomplete work? Also, who's telling the parking contractor to fix the broken caution tape? It's gotta be somebody, right? It's not fixing itself. Or is he just like an old man in a thankless job and this is his sad way to feel like he's contributing? Uh, if that's the case, who's supplying the caution tape and the candlestick traffic cones? And more importantly, why is nobody telling him not to do it? The ultimate absurdity here, of course, is that a lot of the people driving through this intersection like a-holes are they themselves, in less than two minutes' time, going to be the pedestrians walking through this intersection? And then, after they come out of the hospital, they're going to be walking back through the intersection, dodging cars and trying not to get run over, and then two minutes later, they're going to be driving back through the intersection like a-holes. This is just one of the ways that humans are stupid. We can't do anything about it, and we need good street design to correct for it. I mean, I mean, you're not stupid, certainly. I'm not stupid. It's, you know, the other humans who are the ones that make these mistakes, not us. The caution tape needs to be taken down and the crosswalk needs to be repainted. Obviously, moving on. The first thing would be to remove a lane on 16th and stop pretending it's anything except for a glorified parking lot aisle. This could be done with paint and might actually make it easier for drivers by eliminating the aforementioned chaos of a four-lane, four-way stop. The crosswalk should be painted all the way back to where they meet the curb and the stop signs and stop bars moved back accordingly. This way, when drivers inevitably blow through the stop sign and stop on the crosswalk, there's still room for pedestrians to cross the street. Something more substantial than paint would have to be done with the intersection itself, though, because paint isn't going to stop people from pretending it's a free ride. I suggest a floppy bollard bulb out. Long term, the intersection needs to be rebuilt with a curb bulb out and appropriate corner radii and the full eight pedestrian ramps. That's it. That's the pilot episode. Hey, Share this with someone who has intelligent things to say about intersections. They'll thank you, I decided. Also, remember to leave respectable comments so I can use them to update my analysis of 16th and Troy at the end of episode two. Also, also, subscribe so you don't miss next week's episode of Unfortunate Intersections where I dive headfirst into the complex and intoxicating history of curb radius policy in the American Midwest. Starting with the landmark curb radius exhibit at the 1893 Chicago World Fair, going all the way through the 2016 Duluth controversy. <laughs> I think we all know how that turned out. I've managed to cut that script down to less than 45 minutes, so strap in. It is going to be a roller coaster thrill ride of policy and public meetings and sex and murder. Why not? Yeah, I'm still here. If you're watching this after episode two came out, you can click somewhere to watch that. Uh, if not, you can just wait like everybody else.